going on YouTubers it's Mopar Man 1978 um, out here this evening after it kind of cooled off got a big jump in the temps today but uh, I, worked, I was out here working on the car the Valiant a little bit this morning but um, basically what I wanted to show you was uh, I went ahead and did uh, check the valve lash on this uh, all of them were off a little bit so I adjusted the valve lash on this and it's running a lot smoother a lot more even now um, took off the factory exhaust today as you can see here very rusted up um, remember in the last video I told you it was a very big cob job oh, let's just see here I don't know if you might have to get the flashlight yeah here you go Let's see. As you can see, you see that uh, piece of pipe sticking out in there? Um, it's kind of hard to see. They got the uh, sun in my face, but uh, as you can see, that pipe comes up in there. There's a gap between the wall, the flange, and the pipe. So that's very restrictive. And then you got a very small pipe to begin with, anyway. Um, let's see here. I'll show you see how somebody kind of cobbed it up they went from a really big piece of pipe down to a smaller pipe and kind of cob jobbed it in there anyway as you can see here as you can see here somebody took the pipe crumpled it in on itself in order for it to uh, fit into this Midas muffler with a clamp and they clamped it half-assed so it had lots of exhaust leaks and then it went from that wider pipe down to a much narrower pipe out the back so it was even more restrictive to begin with so it was just a great big piece of junk this is only about the, the inner diameter is only about the uh, outer diameter maybe a 50 cent piece maybe a half dollar at most and uh, not much anyway that's that um, as you can see I uh, took out the uh, tail lights today um, getting all the sheet metal bashed back out heated up and bashed out with uh, the torch and the three pound hammer and one of my four auto body uh, hammers and um, got most of it taken care of there's still it's not going to be 100 percent but anyway um, here's the driver's side what's left of the uh, taillight bezel um, here's the piece that was inside around in there and then the clear lens is supposed to go over that i guess uh, um, Anyway, here's the other piece. It was already broke like that. Anyway, um, passenger side, a lot better shape, but it's got this dimple. And if you look real close, it's got a crack in there. Um, I don't know if I want to save this one or not. Um, one thing I noticed too, um, when looking at the back side of this, either it came from the factory that way or somebody did it. Um, I didn't see any of the... Uh, wires like this going into the backup light housing part of the housing there um, this was missing and there was a factory uh, drain plug cap rubber or plastic cap put over this hole um, so yeah so I'm going to be hooked making sure I find another couple of these and I'm going to be actually hooking the backup lights up um, if anybody out there has a driver side 65 Plymouth Valiant tail light housing preferably with the lenses in good shape or possibly without I mean Mexican specs supposed to hook me up um, but anyway um, otherwise I, I want to see if I can get a, a, a good use set anyway um, here's the bag that I uh, 
kept the uh, factory tail light lenses in and there's a good the passenger side had a good uh, red lens I guess it's a spacer it's a factory spacer plate that goes down in there um, anyway um, and I remember telling you in the last video about uh, uh, my buddy giving me a mid 60s a body locking factory locking gasket on now i don't know if it's from the factory or if it was an aftermarket piece from that era but uh it was on my dart but here you go um vintage locking gas cap with the original key i'm going to make it a, make it another key but uh but uh, i test fitted it today There you go. Now Stant should be making these. Especially, or somebody should contact me or something and get this and make uh, replicas. But uh, anyway, there's that. Um, I, I took all the, the panels out of the doors, started oiling everything inside, and I already found that the driver's side um, rod that goes from the door lock cylinder up to the door knob uh, was heavily rusted and I don't know if you could see this let's see here there you go um, where there was a circle here it's rotted off so I'm, I'm gonna have to uh, I don't know if they make new ones of these or, or the whole kit and caboodle or um, just to save some money. Uh, I might try to sand on this and try to re-weld re this up. And, uh, and then what I got to do is that rod that goes in there, the, the misshapen rod that connects the two. Um, I'm going to, I got some um, real thin rod stock from uh, Menards and I'm going to custom bend one and uh, put and then with my Dremel motor tool uh, I'm going to cut the little groove around the top so I can put a lock pin on there, a little wire lock pin. Um, this is the uh, driver's side one marked it D and then uh, this one P. Uh, what I'm probably going to end up doing is having, if I, if I can't get the local locksmith to uh, change out the tumblers in this to match the driver's side so I can use one key. Um, I'll just have them make a key to fit this lock. So I have two keys for the doors. And one key that's for the driver side slash ignition. But anyway, as you can see, I got the speakers in. They're in there with this regular uh, nuts on them. On, on the, the uh, studs here. Uh, until we get the uh, carpet for the back. Um, got some of the the floor I got took the seats out last time but this time I got all the uh, let's see here I got all the floor uh, rust uh, killer converted or what do you call that uh, it converts the it kills the rust neutralizes it converts it to a primer and then what I started doing is I my good one of my what I thought was a good can of my uh, primer sealer in one can that I had sitting for a couple years thought it was good um, evidently it uh, started going bad inside the can and clogged up the sprayer uh, tube coming out of the can and I couldn't get it to work so I started to spray and that's it got stopped so I got all of this done except for that patch over there that patch there which is going to be cut out and I got sheet metal already to patch those. I'm off today and I'm off tomorrow, so I'm gonna get started on the floor. Get the floor out of the way. And tomorrow, the, today didn't rain, and tomorrow's it's not supposed to rain either, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wanna come, or supposedly the rest of the week, uh, I'm gonna buy some high grade, high temp, cold temp, whatever, uh, outside. 100% um, clear uh, silicone seal and uh, 
I'm gonna make sure all the water, when it rained, all it gets dried out around the seal so there's nothing trapped in there to cause it to sweat and rust. And I'm gonna seal this up and seal this up here because uh, we got a slow, when it rains, we got a slow leak that likes to pool right here and then run down and on out. Um, then one over there. And I'm just gonna do that. And then we got a spot on the back that likes to collect water. And I think this rear seal has got the same issue. Even though it's in good shape, it uh, is still leaking a little bit. And I'm gonna do the same thing with that. Get that all sealed up so the floor water will quit coming in on the floor. Um, got, like I said, I got the speakers ran. Got all the new wire ran. This is all be covered up with padding and carpet. I don't really care how, how this looks. Maybe some people might not like that. I don't care. I'm still leaving that open because I'm going to get that third brake light. I'm going to run another set of wire down here and with tape over that and up. And um, like I said, uh, last time I told you that there was a crappy radio that came with the car. It was missing part of its face. Well, this is a digital radio. It has um, a place for to put a memory card in, kind of like what the the the, uh, game, the trail cameras use, and it's got a USB port. So um, I found out it actually works. Let's play a little Pantera here for a couple of like 80s Pantera. But, uh, that was uh, when Dimebag Daryl and, Re and Rex was uh, Pantera back in the 80s when they had the hair the hair band uh, wore a different singer I, th I think Phil didn't come in until after this lead singer had left but anyway that song's called Widowmaker but uh, kind of did this plate diamond plate for temporary shits and giggles um, Eventually, I'm going to take the uh, instrument cluster out, and I'm going to convert the lights over to LED, like I did the General Lee and stuff. Um, but uh, we found. Uh, uh, let's see what else here. Oh, I power sprayed the underside of the car to get all the loose dirt and rust and grit out of it, so it quit falling into my face when I'm trying to work underneath the car. Uh, this car's got uh, coilover rear shocks, um, and I want to get all the uh, underside of the floor prepped for the uh, rust converter killer spray, and then I'm going to do a uh, uh, professional grade rubberized undercoating that has rust inhibitor in it underneath underneath this car. Um, like I said in the last video, we my buddy's got a complete set of 14-inch rims with tires that's going on this. Um, we're going to give him the 13-inch tires and rims because uh, he's got a, a part start at his house that he wants to be able to roll around the backyard. And he don't really... So I'm doing the upgrade as far as the 14-inch rims and tires. And then I got... Uh, I found... A complete set of 65 Valiant dog dish, dog dish hubcaps for this, this uh, uh, specifically Valiant for this car for like 40 some bucks on eBay, 20 bucks shipping. Uh, so we're gonna be getting the rims painted, for too long. and eventually we'll upgrade to better tires that are on the on my buddy's rims. But uh, the last video, I don't know if you saw it, this this car didn't have a, an antenna. I did a uh, video on how to install a universal antenna, an AM and FM radio antenna for your classic vehicle, car, or truck. So that's on there now. Um, went through and anything that uh, needed to be possibly oiled or shot with penetrating oil for pot future projects like uh, rebuilding the front end, um, any uh, the brakes, any of that stuff got uh, coated and. Uh, penetrating oil uh, we're still waiting on because of the uh, labor day um, still waiting this week for the master uh, 
master cylinder to show up a conversion for the, the, the dual reservoir instead of the single one and it looks like I am going to have to replace all the brake lines which is no big deal I think it's like 150 175 bucks from inlinetube.com for this which is no big deal and I'll have the uh, wheel cylinders um, ordered from Rock Auto or PartsGeek.com. It's cheaper on Parts Geek and Rock Auto. I've already priced AutoZone and uh, O'Reilly's and stuff at this point. Um, I think like each front wheel cylinder at O'Reilly's was sixty some dollars a piece, forty to sixty some dollars a piece, and I can get them on, get the same ones on Rock Auto or Parts Geek for like fifteen to twenty five dollars a piece. Anyway. Um, just some odds and ends, um, can't really think of anything else to tell you. Uh, like I said, I'll be doing the, uh, probably a two-part video on the brake upgrade. But, uh, and if, for whoever didn't see the last video and this video, I'm probably going to be swapping out this iron intake to my uh, early 60s factory one barrel aluminum intake for this uh, kind of give it a little bit of a dress up uh, I am going to take everything off here eventually off the engine and cover everything up and I'm going to repaint the engine while it's still on the car and I'm going to paint it red factory red um, I even though I like this orange uh, it's really not period era color but uh but anyway do that and then eventually we'll get the exhaust put on this but um anyway hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more